three ways silver can protect you. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I say that every video, but I really, really mean it. You guys are phenomenal to take the time to watch my videos. I put a lot of effort into them, and I really appreciate it when you like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. I try to get to every single one of your comments because they mean a lot to me. All right, I'm going to talk about, in this video, three ways silver can protect you. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now what those three ways are. Spoiler alert, here they come. The first way that silver protects you is inflation. The second way silver protects you is from moral hazard. And the third way it protects you is from undisciplined savings. Inflation, okay? So this is a big one. And I'm going to start right off the bat saying inflation is no bueno, all right? It is bad. Despite what the financial pundits might say on TV, or uh, the central bankers say, or, or even the government, inflation is a thief that will steal your money. It will rob you of your economic future. You may not realize it, okay? It is so gradual, so insidious, but inflation robs us, okay? In fact, inflation is wholesale, institutional, government-sanctioned, central bank-instigated thievery at the most grotesque and immoral level. Think of it this way. Interest rates that you get, say, at the bank is already below inflation. Let's just say the bank gives you, I don't know, 1%, if you're lucky, <laughs> some, some savings account, definitely not your checking account, but let's just say your savings, you get a 1% um, interest. Inflation is eating up 2% annually, or, or more, actually, if you, if you take a look at the real inflation numbers, but even if you take the government's official 2%, you're losing 1% of your money. Every year, it is slowly decreasing. It's as if somebody was just peeling away the money from your bank account. You know, it stays the same, but you can't buy as much. That's theft. I'm going to tell you, though, something very interesting. And, and while I do it, I'm going to open this box up that I just stabbed. <laughs> My hand was on this side. It would have protected me. All right, so I think there's some silver in fact. I know there are some silver in here from someone in our great community. So I'm gonna just open it up real quick. And I'm gonna talk about our president. So I'm gonna talk about him as it relates to inflation. I'm not gonna say anything, you know, <laughs> mean about him, okay? But but understand this, I believe that there is an explicit agenda that is underlying almost every major policy economic decision that, that this administration is making. I think there is a concerted desire to stimulate inflation with the U.S. dollar. Okay? And I think that underlies everything. I, the Fed has made it very clear that that's what they're doing. I get that. But, but even the administration, I think, wants inflation and wants it badly. Okay? Please hear me out. Okay? President Trump is a real estate mogul. First and foremost, yeah, he was a, a, a celebrity on TV. You know, he, he, he's been a lot of different things. But first and foremost, he is a real estate mogul. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? I invest in property. I, I, I think it's phenomenal to do that. I'm an, a, an unashamed free market capitalist. More power to him, okay, for making billions on property. I think it's wonderful. I would say that there may be no person on the planet whose wealth has been more closely tied to taking advantage of inflation, okay? A spike in inflation, when it goes up really fast, it's one of the best ways for property owners to grow their wealth. Did you know that? 
How, you may ask? <laughs> well, in real estate, asset prices, whether they be uh, homes, apartments, uh, hotels, casinos, you name it, okay? Asset prices. They tend to move in line with the real economy. And at the same time that that's happening, the debt that was used to finance that real estate is usually fixed, okay? It's a fixed rate, usually. So by stimulating real asset prices, the debt is essentially inflated away, okay? That, that is how Trump made his first fortune back in the 80s. You know, I remember that. I remember reading about Trump when he first, you know, hit the scene. I, I remember the Iran uh, revolution. It created an oil crisis. In, inflation just spiked way up. And by 1982, Trump was worth, I think, uh, $100 million. I mean, he was on the uh, Forbes 400 list of millionaires. I mean, he was rich. His wealth exploded at that point. Inflation made him rich. Um, and I'll tell you right now, inflation <laughs> didn't make me rich and, ha and, and doesn't make the vast majority of Americans rich. <laughs> In fact, it makes them poorer and poorer every year. All right. <sighs> now I get to see something fun. <laughs> this is cool. I got two... Tubes of brilliant uncirculated American silver eagles from someone really special in our YouTube community. You know him by the name International Stacker. Thank you so much, IS. I bought him. He gave me a great deal. Two. <laughs> I think they're silver. I gotta check on him. Hmm. <laughs> no, it's silver. Is there anything else? That, uh oh. Uh oh. This is what I get worried about every time I open something up from him. Congratulations, you won an international stacker go. No, I didn't. Please enjoy and hoard this treasure. Dude, come on. You're going to make me look bad. You didn't give me these. I bought them. <laughs> Wise guy. You got to check out international stacker if you have not subscribed to him. He's a great, great guy. I, he really is. I, I, I'm beginning to, to know him more and more on a personal level too and i'm i'm blessed to be able to know him um but what is this what the heck what the heck oh that's awesome <laughs> i'm sorry this tube of american silver eagles was featured in three international full stack videos will yankee beat dragons Tube one of two, two, tube of two. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, man, if you, if you don't know, Silver Dragons and I are, are having a friendly little battle towards a monster box. Um, I'm getting dangerously close, but I think he's going to turn on the jet soon. So, well played. Awesome. Thank you so much, my friend. Okay. <laughs> wow. Let me just, uh, and these aren't mint sealed, so I'm going to open them up. Not that I don't trust my friend, <laughs> but I do want to be able to take a closer look at these. Yeah, nice. 2016s. Very cool. Got to touch them. Oh, yeah. Woo -hoo. Beautiful. Thank you so much for letting me buy these. And I do emphasize the fact that I bought them. Okay, so where was I? Yes, um, inflation. That is one of the things that silver protects you from. Okay, the, the Fed is hell-bent on keeping interest rates low. Okay, no matter what inflation does, they are all in. They, they are, they're trying to increase inflation desperately. You know, in fact, if you go back to... Um, 2002, there was a speech by Ben Bernanke, and he suggested that in the future, the Fed may actually just fix interest rates. That means they would, they would, they would target a specific rate for the three-month, the one-year, the 10-year, the 30-year treasuries, okay? And they wouldn't allow them to go up, capped, okay? 
How would they do that? It's simple. They would print, 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 and buy every single T-bill necessary to keep rates locked, okay? That would expand the Fed's balance sheet like $10, $20 trillion worth. I mean, our dollar would be just shoved tremendously lower and lower and lower. That's the end game, folks. Hyperinflation, the complete destruction of the U.S. dollar. And inflation is deadly to our economy. We've played this game before. It can ruin us. And silver, silver, as I've said many times, is a wonderful inflation hedge. It helps protect against the craziness that the Fed and and our economy is all about right now. So that's number one. (laughs) That's what this helps protect you against inflation. The second thing that silver helps protect us against is what's called moral hazard. Moral hazard. All right, Yankee, what the heck is moral hazard? Well, let me define it simply by saying that it is the the idea that a party, a, a person, a corporation, a financial institution, a party, protected from financial risk will somehow act differently than if they didn't have that protection, okay? It's called the sure thing, people, okay? For you gamblers out there, of which uh, Yankee's not much, I'm not a gambler, but if you know this by what's called playing with house money, okay? It's a sure thing. Let let, let me give you a quick uh, Yankee stacking story to illustrate. So when I was young, um, you know, 17, and I was, you know, looking at colleges, you know, I had saved, I had saved and saved and saved. I had actually saved for one full year of a private institute, uh, a college, right, uh, for a liberal arts college that I went to. My parents, they paid for a second year, and together, we had taken out student loans um, for a third year, okay? So the third year was going to be covered by student loans that I did pay off rather quickly back then. The fourth year was paid by the most magnanimous giving family that was close to our family. They wanted me to go to a specific college and they said, we are going to help Yankee out. And the way they did it was really novel. They bought stock for me. And this is what they said. They said, we're going to buy stock because we want Yankee to get some experience with stock. I was a kid. I didn't know much. And we want him to watch it, track it, chart it, whatever. So they gave me stock. But here's the gotcha. This is, this is the beauty of the whole thing. They said it, he, could, he can't lose. If the stock goes up, he gets the principal and whatever it makes. If the stock goes down, we'll still give him what we gave him in the principal. I couldn't lose. Now, of course, I enjoyed this. I mean, I rode my bike down back then before the internet. I rode my bike to the library, you know, would get the, you know, Wall Street Journal. I'd be looking up the stock and I would chart it and graph it and it tanked. (laughs) It was some hot tip that they got, but they gave me the full amount regardless. That was my fourth year paid by a wonderful, wonderful family. I will never forget that generosity. And I've tried to pay it forward and do it to others as much as I can in my life. So, but anyways, my point was, it was a sure thing. I couldn't lose. If it went down, I had my principal. If it went up, I had the principal and interest uh, in what I made. It was unbelievable. And that, my friends, that is what the Federal Reserve is doing right now. It's called the Fed put or, or Fed backing. It, think of it like a backstop to a uh, softball field, Okay. The Fed is giving protection against crappy investments and risky casino-like actions by the financial system, banks, uh, especially investment banks. The Fed is protecting them. It can't go bad. They will only allow the markets to drop so far, and that's it. (laughs) That's moral hazard, folks, okay? in a party that has that kind of protection, they're going to act differently. They're going to invest differently. They're going to speculate. They're going to roll the dice. You're playing with house money. But the problem is this. 
That assurance by the Fed rings hollow, folks. They will never be able to cover asset losses through a bailout, okay? They won't be able to do it again. They don't have the ammo. They're, they're going to be faced with what I think is, is two options. They're either going to, they're either going to uh, revert to what's called a bail-in, okay, where that is when they literally go in and steal people's assets, 401k, bank accounts, wherever it is, or more likely, they're going to hyperinflate our U.S. economy. So again, inflation, like I mentioned before. This is moral hazard, and, and this is what threatens your wealth, okay? Either through a direct theft, literal theft by the U.S. government targeting your, you know, your accounts, or through an extreme devaluation of your hard-earned cash. The value of your money will plummet. So again, silver, okay? Especially if it's in your hands. I'm going to talk about uh, in another video why you don't want these in the bank, like in a safety deposit box. But precious metal, silver and gold, it will help protect you against the moral hazard that is ripping through our economy right now. That's number two. And number three, it protects you against undisciplined savings. Okay, I'm going to... Um, yeah, I'm going to tell you another Yankee stacking story. I'll try to keep it brief, guys. But, um, and, and, and it's about the same time period. So after that incredible opportunity that I was gifted and the hard work that I put in, I went to this college, this liberal arts college. Uh, I studied computer science and, and I really had a, a really good education. But while I was there, I talked to somebody. They were telling me about this uh, trip that they were going to go on. And I was like, wow, that sounds like fun. Where are you going again? And he described it. And it's, it was a pretty elaborate trip in Europe. And I was like, man, that sounds great. You must have saved a long time for that vacation. <laughs> he looked at me like I had four heads. And he said, what are you talking about? That's what a credit card is for, dope. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> See, I grew up in a family where we were fiscally responsible. We we didn't have debt. We we had savings. We were very, very careful. My parents were 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 fiscally responsible in all that they did. And they would save for sometimes two, three years or more sometimes to, to take us on a vacation as a family. And we didn't have extravagant vacations. A lot of times it was camping or, or, you know, maybe I went to Disney. That was special, right? But it was not on a debit or a credit card. And I was clueless, okay? Because remember, I'm old, all right? Yankee's an old guy. And I was born in 1966. I witnessed the dawn of credit cards, uh, de debit cards, um, ATMs, PayPal, which I use a lot, <laughs> Apple Pay, which I love. And even now, I just saw Amazon's hand scanning technology. I've seen it all, guys. All right? That whole, that whole shift. It was a sea change in American culture from saving first to spending first. The U.S. has spiraled into just obscene debt and living way, way beyond their means. Many in the community have said, and so I'm not the first to say this, that Stacking silver is like a, a forced savings, okay? When, when you have that, that, that fiat in your hand and you're thinking of buying something and you're like, mm, you know, I'm going to convert it because that's what it really is, guys. You're converting that fiat or swapping that fiat into real money, okay? When you do that conversion, you're exercising savings discipline, something so foreign in our United States uh, mindset. Right now, it's all about spending. The government relies on your spending. If everybody stacked, our economy would crash. If, if people realize the value of true money, that would be the end. So there you have it, guys. That's, that's my three, three ways that I believe silver protects us. 
I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If it resonates with you, if you've got some feedback, please put it in the comment section. I want to read about it. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay. Wait a minute. What? Are you kidding me?